Welcome to Parkwood Church Online. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us uh, today, this morning, this evening, this afternoon, whenever it is, and wherever you're at. Uh, we're honored to have you with us as we continue uh, to gather in community to find hope in the person of Jesus and home in our community with one another. So a few things before we get started, uh, a couple of heads up that I want to bring your way is, uh, first of all, uh, we want to continue our initiative and our focus on prayer. So not just during a pandemic, but in any time of the year, uh, prayer is, uh, is a main focus. And so a few things that we're doing to emphasize prayer right now uh, is uh, our 714 uh, campaign that uh, is part of a, uh, a, a global uh, initiative at 714 a.m. and 714 p.m. every day. We're just committing to pray and we're praying specifically for an end to COVID, uh, praying for the gospel to be able to be brought forth there during this time uh, and then praying for whatever else it is that you want to pray for during that time. Uh, also, if you go to our website, there's a prayer link and some suggestions of what you can pray for and how you can pray. And every Thursday on Facebook Live at 7 p.m., you can join Pastor Gary and Jan Beasley as they interact uh, and connect with you live in prayer uh, and have a time of prayer and worship together. And so that's something that you'll want to check out. Uh, secondly is our family resources. And so for those of you that have youth and kids uh, at home and are looking for some age-specific resources to be a supplement for the weekend messages, is if you go to uh, our Parkwood website and at the Sunday experience, at the at-home resources, there's age-specific resources that you guys uh, can, uh, can download, your kids can do with you as a family, the older youth can do on their own as devotions. And so that's something that you'll, you'll wanna check out, available online every weekend. And thirdly, we wanna encourage you to continue to operate in a spirit of generosity during this season and beyond uh, in our giving. And so whether that's uh, sending uh, our finances through the mail or through text to give, uh, you can just go to the Parkwood website and, and click give. There's a lot of different options that will walk you through the steps of the ways that we can continue uh, to, uh, to give and contribute to the ministries uh, of Parkwood. And so to give you an opportunity, if you wanna do that now, or if you just wanna go grab a coffee, we'll give you a few moments to do that before we continue on in our worship together. church family amazing to be together with you again wherever you are watching in your homes or anywhere else and I'm just praying this morning that as we worship God that you would just feel his presence surround you wherever you are right now and that we would just give him glory in spirit and truth this morning together come on I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah comes to fight for me come on
a Savior. Come on. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before.
you are so good. Father, sometimes words even struggle to come close to how good you are as we continually realize your faithfulness and your your blessing in our lives, God. And I just thank you so, so much for all of that. So in this moment, wherever we are, God, we dedicate this time to you. We dedicate this time to your glory, your honor, and your praise. There is no other worthy of that. So Father, we give you all glory, honor, praise, and thanks. You are so holy. We honor you. Amen. Parkwood. Uh, So glad that you've taken time to join us today for Church Online. Uh, We we also know as we put out these videos and our services here that there's there's people from really not just uh, in the Windsor community that uh, are are joining us that aren't normally a part of our church family, but we have people from all around the world that are joining us. So if you're joining us wherever you are, just a special welcome to you. Uh, My name is Danny Gray, and I have the honor of Uh, pastoring this great church in uh, this season. I I was uh, actually watching a devotional uh, by one of our pastors, Pastor Gary. It was actually his son uh, who pastors down, I I believe, in Georgia. And uh, during his devotional, he had his favorite mug, which was, I think, a Superman mug. Uh, And he was just talking about how everyone needs to have their favorite mug. And so this is my favorite mug. This is my Green Bay Packers uh, mug. I am a Packers fan, which uh, makes me an enemy in Windsor because everyone seems to be a Detroit Lions fan. But anyway, welcome everyone. Again, we're so glad that you are here with us. Uh, this is, if, if you're actually joining us and this is your first time, this is a great Sunday for you to join in with us uh, as we are uh, concluding our April series that we've been in called Rescue. Uh, All throughout this month, we've just been uh, walking through the great rescue story of God. Uh, We started by just uh, taking a look at, in the beginning, God created everything. Everything seen and everything unseen, and he called it good. But then Adam and Eve, it's through them that, that sin enters the picture. And then sin, sin comes into this story and just shatters everything. So yes, God created everything, but then sin shattered everything. And because God is good and loving, he chose just not to kick his creation to the curb, but he, he chose to fix it. So God actually comes into the world himself in the person of Jesus Christ. He he, he came for us. He lived for us. He died for us. He rose for us, sealing the deal. That was Easter Sunday. Uh, Last week, we we studied how how then Jesus ascended uh, up into heaven, which made way for the descension of the Holy Spirit. That, That that God is still with us today as our comforter. He, he comes to administer his presence and his power to the church. But today, as we continue on, today, as we close off this series, we're not going to be looking at the story past or even the story present. No, today's very unique, where today we're actually going to be looking into the future. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to be joining together and we're, and, and we're looking at the great thought that, that Jesus is coming back for us. We're, we're looking into the future, into the final chapter of the rescue story of God. Jesus is coming back. Uh, because there's so many new people that, that could be joining us, I just felt like I would share. I, I, I am incredibly blessed. I have an, an amazing family at home. 
Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I, I have a, a, a beautiful wife uh, outside and, and in. Uh, Natalie, she is, you know, people use that phrase, my better half. She actually is uh, my better half. I mean, she, she loves Jesus. She loves the church. She, she loves me. Uh, she loves our children. Like, like it, I'm absolutely so blessed to have Natalie. And, and, and her and I uh, have two kids. Uh, we have a daughter, uh, Nora Pearl, and we have a son, Bo Martin. And uh, that's, my, uh, that, that's my immediate home life uh, that I love and cherish so much. Uh, and just o- over the, the, the past couple of years, like we've, we've just gotten into certain rhythms and routines with, with our kids. Uh, one of those routines that, that we've just fallen into is with, with my daughter, Nora, uh, every single night, uh, I'm actually the one that, that puts Nora to bed, uh, and I'm the one who gets up with her first thing in, in, in the morning. And so uh, every night, uh, what I do is I, I bring her up to bed, I sing her a song, I, I pray, and then uh, I, I get her nice and tucked in her bed, like with all of her nice sheets, and she has to have these certain stuffed animals just, just right next to her. And a, a few months ago, we were, we were going through this routine, and so I brought her up, I sang her the song, I prayed with her, put her to bed, got her all nice and cozy, and she fell asleep, and then uh, early in the morning, I, I hear her just saying, Daddy, 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 Daddy. And, and, and you would think that she would stop saying it, but she won't stop. I, I've, I've tried. She would just go on and on. And she's just, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And so, you know, I, I go into her room to get her. Except this time, it just, it, it, it just th- th- this picture just kind of burned itself into my memory where I, I went into the room to get her and and with this huge smile on her face, she said, Daddy, you came back for me. Daddy, you came back for me. And, and the interesting thing was she was holding her blankets and she was holding her stuffed animals in, in, in her arms, just smiling, Daddy, you came back for me. It was this beautiful moment. And so I ran over to her and I, I picked her up and I held her so tight. And I said, yes, I love you. I love you. I will always come back for you. You see, just like my, uh, or just like I went back for my daughter, what we need to understand this morning is this, that Jesus is coming back for us. Listen, I want you to hear me wherever you are right now. Maybe you're in your living room, your kitchen, you're driving and listening on a podcast. Wherever you are, I, I, I want you to hear me. Jesus is actually physically coming back. This is the rescue story complete. You see, the first time that Jesus came, it was to be the suffering servant. That's done. Like that's over, or in the words of Jesus himself, it is finished. The, the, the second time he comes, he comes not to suffer, but to reign and rule. He comes not as a baby, but in all of his glory. He comes not to tell parables, but he comes to rescue his people. Jesus is coming back. And something that I've learned uh, over the years is that it's, it's not just we in the church who have opinions on what will happen when, when Jesus returns. In fact, I'll just read you a few different quotes. Uh, Woody Allen, the, 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 the famous director, says this. He said, if Jesus came back and saw what was being done in his name, he would not be able to stop throwing up. Uh, British historian uh, Thomas Carlyle says that if Jesus Christ were to come today, people would not crucify him. They would ask him over for dinner, hear what he had to say, and then make fun of him. Uh, Mike Tyson, the, uh, the, the, the boxer, says, all praise to Allah, all fight any man, any animal, and if Jesus came back, I would fight him too. See, according to some... When Jesus returns, he's either throwing up, getting beat up, or mocked by the masses. But I promise you this. When Jesus returns, and he most definitely will, he will not be getting beat up, he will not be throwing up, and he will not be mocked by anybody. You see, when Jesus returns, the Bible is clear, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Why? Because when he returns, he doesn't return as a baby. 
When he comes back, he comes back as king of all kings and lord of all lords. He is coming back. So here's the question. So what does the Bible actually say about the return of Jesus? Well, glad you asked. Uh, It says a lot. It says a lot. In fact, most people don't know that the Bible actually speaks a lot more about his second coming in the future than it does about his first coming at Christmas some 2,000 years ago. Like there there is far more scripture pointing to his return uh, than the first time that he came. And so today what I want to do in in the rest of our time together is is I just want to take a look at some of this. Uh, I I, want to be very clear right now. This message, this talk that that I want to give, this is not a detailed eschatology. Okay? This is not a chronological walkthrough of all of the events of uh, the end times. That's, that's not what this is. But ra- we, don't, we don't have time to do that. Uh, rather, right now, uh, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to take a look at the final chapter. Like, and I mean the final chapter of the rescue story of God. I, I want to take a look at this picture of Jesus coming back for us. So if you're taking notes, and I hope that you are, that's a great way for you to participate with me. Uh, Today I have two points. Two points and then one big question that all of us, no matter who you are, I'm going to challenge us to wrestle through. Uh, So two points and one question. If you're taking notes, here's my first point. The return of Jesus will be sudden and loud. I want you to write that down. The return of Jesus will be sudden and loud. You see, the first time that Jesus came, uh, he came relatively slow and quiet. I want you to think about it. He came through Mary, right? Uh, That means that Mary was pregnant with Jesus for nine months. We know this because that's how long it takes to have a baby. Nine months. Jesus came. It took nine months for him to actually come. And then after he even came into the world, like like word of his coming was just slowly spreading through uh, the the ancient Mediterranean world. And like even think about this, all these great announcements that we that, that we read at Christmas, like the angels uh, with, with, with the shepherds and the wise men, and then you have Jesus' own family, and all of these things, these were still announcements made to a very, very small group of people. That's why Jesus, at, at age 30, is still announcing who he is to, uh, when he starts off his, his, his ministry. The first time he came, it was relatively slow and quiet. That will not be the case with his second coming. The the second time he comes, when he returns, it will be sudden and it will be loud. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, it will happen suddenly, quicker than the blink of an eye. Now, I haven't done the math on that. Okay, I, I, I don't know the, the math on how fast the blink of an eye is, but here it actually says that it will be quicker than that. His return is going to happen very suddenly. 1 Thessalonians 5.2 says, For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. Um, basically, here, here's the idea. If somebody is going to break into your house, they, they, they don't call you up to tell you first. Right? They don't, they don't get on the phone. It's like, hey, hey, Bob. Yeah, hey, hey Bob, I, I just wanted to let you know. Um, I'm looking at my watch. Uh, approximately midnight tonight, I'm going to be just breaking through your back window. You, no need to panic. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Like, like, no, no, that doesn't happen. You find out or someone's breaking into your house while it's happening. It happens uh, suddenly, unexpectedly. So will it be with the return of Jesus, but his return is not just going to be sudden. His return is going to be loud. See, at Christmas, we sing this song of of, of his first coming, silent night, holy night. Listen, I just want to tell you, there's, there's going to be nothing silent 
about the second coming of Jesus. First Thessalonians 4.16 says, and with a loud command and with the shout of the chief angel in a blast of God's trumpet, the Lord will return from heaven. Now, I'll be honest, man, I don't even know what all of that means. I don't, but what I see is this, that it's going to be loud. This isn't silent night, holy night, right? This is loud commands. This is shouts from angels. And and then there's going to be a blast from the trumpet of God. Like, did you know that that, that God has his own trumpet? Uh, This this here, this is is my trumpet. most of you probably don't know this. I played trumpet for about nine years, uh, grade school, high school, just kind of plugged my way through there. Um, and uh, I'm not any good. Like, I'm, I'm really not any, any, any good at all. But I want you just to listen to how loud I can play my trumpet. Ready? <laughs> I think I pulled something in my side doing that. Okay, um, so, so, so that's as loud as I can play my trumpet, okay? I want you to think for a moment how loud the trumpet call of God is going to be. Okay, when this happens, his return, it is going to be loud. Mountains will shake, rivers will roar. The return of Jesus is going to be announced on such a level that, that, that honestly, it will be something like, we've, like none of us have ever experienced or heard before in our lives. When Jesus returns, his return will be sudden and his return will be loud. That's the first point. The second point, and again, taking notes, write this down. Point number two, his return will be severe and sweet. You see, there's, there's two different sides to the return of Jesus. Uh, It's what the Bible actually calls his return as the great and dreadful day of the Lord. One part is great, the other is dreadful. One part is severe, while the other part is sweet. And today what I want to do is I just want to take a look at both sides of these in in, in our remaining time together. First, I, I, I want to take a look at the severity of his return. You see, the severity of the return of Jesus, this is a picture that that, that many of us don't really want to talk about. In fact, even right now, my guess is that an awkward silence has maybe fallen over several living rooms. And quite honestly, I get it. You see, this isn't a fun picture. This is a hard picture. I mean, there's, there's pastors right now that they won't even come close to touching this because they know the reaction that it's going to spark from, from, from the people, and so they just avoid it. But, but listen, I just want you to hear my heart. It is not my job to tell you what you want to hear. It is my job to present to you the full counsel of the scriptures. If you can, turn over with me into the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Uh, if you're new to the Bible, Revelation is the last book Um, in in there. Chapter 19, starting in verse 11, it outlines a picture of the severity of the return of Jesus. And it says this. It says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider was called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, that's a long way from baby Jesus, isn't it? 
Like, like, like if, if we're honest and we're looking at this picture, man, like for, for, for many of us, man, we haven't even created the mental space for this Jesus. And yet this is how he will return, not as a baby, but as a judge. And I, and I want you to hear my heart. That's why, Parkwood, every single week before this COVID situation and after every single week, we do our best to present to you the gospel of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, the grace of Jesus, the mercy of Jesus, that any of us at any time can be saved and rescued. And we do this so often because there is a day coming when that invitation is closed. There is a day coming when the plea of God to a broken and fallen world to find hope and freedom in him is over. And now we see this picture. Jesus, the one who comes to judge and judges severely. You see, our God is a God of justice. And the penalty of our sin is death. That's why Jesus came the first time. He came to, to die in our place for our sins. You see, he, he came to pay the price. And oh, he did. Jesus, when he went to the cross, man, he, he paid the bill in full. So now anyone who calls upon the name of Jesus can be saved. But what we need to realize is this, sin will always demand a payment, always. So that's gonna go down in one of two ways. Either we let Jesus take that on the cross for us to pay the price for us or I love you enough to tell you, or you pay the price. But the choice is yours. There is no third option. But it's right now, it's right now that I actually want to remind us of another truth in God's word. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine says this about his return. It says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Listen, honestly, I'm not trying to stand up here today and scare you into the kingdom of God. Quite honestly, I don't even know if that works. But rather, what I want to do today is I want to, I want to show you two very real things about God. Number one, that the justice of God is a very real thing. But so is the love of God that even now he is creating space. He's creating room for you to find freedom in salvation. Even now he is relenting on his return because he is being patient with you. You want to know what I call that? I call that love. I call that love. But this is the first picture that we have to see. The return of Jesus will be severe because sin demands payment. The second thing that I want to show you is this, that the return of Jesus will be sweet. It will be sweet. And here's why it's going to be sweet. You see, when Jesus returns, he's bringing heaven with him. Uh, if you're in Revelation 19, just flip the page. We're going two chapters over, Revelation 21. I want to read you um, just a great text. Revelation 21, starting in verse 5. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her, for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything 
new. Okay, so I want you to see it. See it. Join in. The, the, the final picture that we're given about the return of Jesus is, is the, the, the final picture in the great rescue story of God is, is heaven and earth colliding. Like heaven and earth colliding and becoming one shared space. You see, this picture of heaven and earth colliding is the, like, it's the zenith of all of the scriptures where God's kingdom will ultimately be established forever and ever and ever and ever. This might be, honestly, our greatest hope as Christians. Um, Revelation just talked about right there. We get new bodies, Right? We get new resurrected bodies that don't break down, that don't get sick, and that don't die. That's amazing. That is hopeful. We get new bodies on a new earth. A new earth where there's, where there's no hurricanes and no tsunamis and, 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 and no diseases or germs. There will not be a coronavirus on this day, right? There's, there, there's just this beautiful picture, new bodies on a new earth where heaven has invaded. But the best part is not the new body and it's not the new earth. The best part is this. We get Jesus, Not just the things of Jesus, but we get him. He will be with us. We will be his people and he will be our God. You see, when Jesus returns, he will get what he deserves. Praise, glory, adoration. When he returns, uh, the devil and all of evil is going to get what, 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 what it deserves, defeat and disgrace. And when Jesus returns, we, church, who put our hope in him, we get what we don't deserve. We get eternal life with God. You see, if, if I can be honest, I know Danny Gray. And I know what Danny Gray deserves. And if at the end of all of this, it's left up to just, just did I do more good things than bad things or whatever it is. Like, man, I don't know about you. I'm in trouble. If if, if that's what this is all left up to at the end of the day, man, I think we're all in trouble. But that's not the great rescue story of God. The great rescue story of God is this, that all of us who put our hope and faith and trust in him, We don't get what we deserve. We get the opposite. We get what we don't deserve. We get eternal life with God. That is a sweet deal. The return of Jesus. It will be sudden and it will be loud. His return will be severe and it will be sweet, which leads me to my one big question Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus to come back? Is is your soul ready for the return of the king? One more Bible verse that that, that I want to take you to. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28. It says, So Christ died only once to take away the sins of many people. But when he comes again, it will not be to take away sin. He will come to save everyone who is waiting for him. Listen, he's not coming to suffer. He's coming to reign and to rule and to rescue all who are waiting for him. That phrase right there, those who are waiting for him, is simply another way to say those who are ready for him. Those who are living with an eager anticipation and hope that he will return. You need to understand this. Our our hope in Jesus returning, this isn't blind optimism. That's that's not what this, this is hope. This is grounded, rooted, established hope that he will come back. And he's coming back for those who are ready and for those who are waiting. In fact, at this time, I, I, I just want you to take a look at this other video, this, this powerful spoken word. The people had read of this rescue that was coming through the bloodline of Abraham. 
and they had seen where Micah proclaimed about a ruler to be born in Bethlehem. And Daniel prophesied about the restoration of Jerusalem. Isaiah's cry about the Son of God coming to them. So for them, it was anticipation. This groaning was growing generation after generation, knowing he was holy no matter what the situation, but they longed for him. They yearned for him. They waited for him on the edge of their seats, on the edge of where excitement and containment meet. They waited. Like a child watches out the window for their father to return from work, they waited. Like a groom stares at the double doors at the back of the church, they waited. And in their waiting, they had hope. Hope that was fully pledged to a God they had not seen. To a God who had promised a king. A king who would reign over the enemy, over Satan's tyranny, they waited. And so it was centuries of expectations with various combinations of differing schools of thought. Some people expecting a political king who would rise to the throne through the wars that he fought, while others expecting a priest who would restore peace through the penetration of the Pharisees' facade. Yet, a baby, 100% human, 100% God. And so the Word became flesh and was here to dwell among us in His fullness, grace upon grace, Jesus. You see, through him and for him, all things were created and in him, all things are sustained. God had made himself known for the glory of his name and this child would one day rise as king, but it would not be by the sword or an insurgent regime. It would be by his life. A life that would revolutionize everything the world knew. He would endure temptation and persecution all while staying true. Humbly healing the broken, the sick and hurting too. Ministering reconciliation, turning the old to new. A life that would be the very definition of what life really costs. Saying, if you desire life, then your crown must be lost. And he would portray that with his own life as his father would pour out and exhaust. And he would be obedient to the point of death even death upon a cross. And so just 33 years after the day that he laid swaddled in the hay, he hung on a tree, suffocating, dying in our place, absorbing wrath that is rightly ours, but we could never bear the weight. And so he took that punishment and he put it in the grave and he died. And when I say that he died, what I mean is that he died. There's no breath. There's no heartbeat, there's no sign of life. You see, God is a God of justice and the penalty for our sin equals death. That's what Christ did on the cross. And then just three days later, in accordance with the scriptures, he was raised from the grave. And when I say that he was raised, what I mean is that he was raised. Lungs breathing, heart pumping, blood pulsing through his veins. The things that he promised were true. He is the risen son of God offering life to me and you, turning our mourning into dancing, our weeping into laughing, our sadness into joy. By his mercy we are called his own. By His grace, we will never be left alone. By His love, He is preparing our home. And by His blood, we sing before His throne that Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but He washed it white as snow. So now we, as his bride, are the ones waiting. Like the saints that came before us, we're anticipating. He has shown us that this world is fading and he has caused our desire to be for him. And so church, stay ready. Keep your heart focused and your eyes steady. Worship him freely, never forgetting his great love for you. Emmanuel. So Parkwood, this is the great rescue story of God. In the beginning, God created us, right? He created everything. Sin shattered everything. So he came for us. He lived for us. He died for us. He rose for us. He ascended for us. He descended through the power of the Holy Spirit. And one day he is coming back to rescue us. 
but I'll ask the question one more time. Are you ready? I want you to go back with me just to that picture of my daughter. Uh, you know, I go up into her room to get her early in the morning, you know, with a big smile on her face, right? Daddy, you came back for me, but I want you to see that picture. She had all the stuffed animals and the blankets wrapped up in her arms. She was anticipating. She was waiting. She was ready for me to come. Is that you? Can, can, can that be said of you? Are you ready for that day? Are you prepared for that day? Is your soul ready for his return? I, I honestly pray that the answer is yes to that. And I know for many people watching this video, your answer is yes. But I also know that there are some that are watching this video right now and you know that the answer is no. Right now, you know that you're not ready. You know that if Jesus actually did come back today, you don't, you don't know what would happen. You don't know if it would be sweet or severe. You don't, you don't know where you stand with God. And maybe, just maybe, God is actually using this moment right now with me preaching through a camera to go into your living room today to wake you up, to, to, to call you home and to give you hope, not just for today, but hope for eternity. Listen, if, if, if that's you, if that's you today and you're just saying, man, I want to get right with God I, I, I want to get right with him. Listen, what I want you to do is, is I, I, I just want you to repeat a prayer after me. I, I, I'm gonna lead you through a prayer. It's, it's pretty simple, but what you need to understand, first of all, is this. We don't, as Christians, believe in incantations, okay? Th th this, is, th this prayer is not some, some series of magical words that if you just say this, well, abracadabra, poof. That, that, that's not what we believe at all. The, the, the Bible actually says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, man, you will be rescued. You will be saved. And so if that's you today and you just, today is your day, you know that you need to be rescued. It's not an incantation. This is not an abracadabra moment but this could be a moment that changes your life forever. If that's you, would you just repeat after me and just say, God, I need you. God, I love you. God, I need rescue. I'm sorry for doing it my own way. I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Would you cleanse me? Would you save me? Would you rescue me? Jesus, thank you for paying the price. Jesus, thank you for standing in my place for my sins. Today, I choose you. Be my joy, be my love risen Jesus. Amen. 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 Listen, oh, this smile is not fake. Listen, if you prayed that prayer and you actually meant that, like you meant that in your heart and you confessed your need for Jesus to come, listen, today the rescue story goes on. Rescue has reached into your home. God has reached into your home and has saved you today, not just to an amazing life with him right now, but to life everlasting with him forever and ever and ever. I so celebrate with you today. And uh, beyond that, it's not just me, honestly, all of heaven right now is celebrating with you today. This is the best decision, whether you made it for the first time or the hundredth time and you're just coming back home. Listen, we celebrate with these decisions that God is still rescuing his people.
Uh, listen, what we're gonna do right now is, is, is we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it back over to Pastor Ty and the team, and they're gonna lead us through, through one more song. It's this, it's this song called Even So Come, and it just talks about the return of Jesus. And, and, and in that, um, if you've never heard this before, just meditate on the words. If you know it, sing along. It's pretty easy as, as we just proclaim that we are waiting for the return of the King. Blessings, church. All of creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. So call back the sinner, wake up the saints, let every nation shout at your fame. Jesus is coming soon, yeah. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so come, Lord Jesus. is coming soon oh yeah like a bride waiting for her groom we'll be church ready for you every heart longing for our king we sing like a bride waiting for her
So, Father, that is our prayer. We turn our eyes to you. We look to your return. We look to the glorious future that you have prepared, that you have already begun that work now, and God, we look forward to its fulfillment. But, Father, in the meantime, we're here, and we're glorifying you. We're shouting your name through all the earth. So, Father, may that just be what reigns in our hearts today, this reality that you are coming again. You are coming again. And that should build faith and excitement and joy in us who follow you. So, Lord, right now in this time of worship, we honor you, we glorify you, and we look forward to that great day when we are once again united with you in a way that we've never even experienced before, face to face, God. So, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are so, so good. In your holy, holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen.